Okay, good evening and welcome to our community safety update meeting. This is our opportunity um, number three for us to get together with our partners and share out some relevant information and updates about school safety. And so I wanna thank those people who have taken time to come out. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. We've got board members and emergency services and Centerville, so lots of familiar faces. But we're gonna start off with introductions. Patty Salen, superintendent. Helen Bennett, Board of Education member. Lori Morris, Department of Emergency Services. Joseph Ori, the coordinator of school safety and security. Good evening, Lieutenant Mark Mio, Sheriff's Department on behalf of Sheriff Hoffman. Thank you for having me here tonight. Awesome. So we're gonna first do go with an update and I'm gonna throw that all over to Mr. Sabori, who um, is our school safety representative and he's gonna give an update on where we are and then there may be some questions and comments from our other um, panel members and then we'll open that up for questions. Awesome, good evening everybody. I'm gonna start with um, some questions that were asked the last time that we met, um, just to kind of cover some of the questions that were asked last time that we met and hopefully uh, provide some answers if we didn't provide them back then. Um, so in no particular order, um, someone had asked at the last meeting, what happens if law enforcement uh, observes a security violation, meaning like an open door, unsecured door, uh, and we recommend that that person uh, immediately contact the administrator at that school uh, or a, uh, a teacher that they see around the school uh, and to let them know what they found. Uh, and then we'll work with those administrators to find out why the door was unsecured uh, and make sure that hopefully it doesn't happen again. Uh, someone asked about uh, conversations about our school safety drills and um, what types of conversations that we have um, each school is different, each grade level is different. Uh, we encourage our staff to have age appropriate conversations with their students. So the conversation about a uh, severe weather drill would be a lot different with a first grader than, than it would be a junior uh, at a high school. So um, we certainly encourage that. Um, where can parents access drill language for each grade? Um, speak with staff is my first recommendation. Take some time during your meetings with the staff, the scheduled meetings to talk to them about that. Um, all of our drill language can also be found on the Queen Anne's County Public Schools website under the security tab on the home page. So it gives a really detailed breakdown of what each type of drill is, what our responses are, uh, and, the, and the language that's associated with those types of drills. Uh, let's see, someone had asked about if uh, our bus drivers receive any type of uh, security training. Uh, back in August, we did another training. I think this was the third or fourth training that our school bus operators have had, uh, where I go in for 30 minutes. I think we do eight or 10 sessions a day, uh, and we bring in our bus operators and we talk to them about different types of crises or emergencies that they might experience on a school bus, uh, suspicious activity at a bus stop, uh, and some other factors that, that they would consider uh, when they have children on board the bus. So our school bus operators, our cafeteria employees, uh, our maintenance folks, uh, everybody across the board receives some level of training uh, on safety and security. Uh, since it's Go Purple Month, um, Ms. Morissette and I had a conversation. I was curious how many doses of Narcan were at each school when I was informed that we had either one or two doses of Narcan at each school. Um, we got together and, and didn't think that that was a, a good amount to have at our schools. Uh, we hope that we don't ever need to use a single dose of Narcan at our schools. Uh, but thanks to the health department, we were able to now have five doses of Narcan at each one of our schools. So updates. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some classroom and building security improvements. Uh, I covered a lot of stuff last time we met. I'll cover what we've done over the summer um, and what we're planning to do moving forward. Um, I mentioned at the last meeting that all of our law enforcement officers in Queen Anne's County, including Maryland Transportation Authority Police, Natural Resources Police, the Maryland State Police, Centerville Police, and the Office of the Sheriff for Queen Anne's County now have 24 seven key card access to all of our schools. And we have encouraged those law enforcement agencies to pop in anytime they want. Uh, if it's raining out and they want to shoot some basketballs on midnight shift, they're welcome to do that. Just lock the door behind you. 
uh, you need to use the restroom or anything like that, we would certainly encourage you to do that as well. But please feel free uh, to our law enforcement partners to stop by these schools, uh, introduce yourselves, walk through the halls, check in with the front office first, uh, walk through the halls, check on some doors and things of that nature. Um, we love seeing law enforcement at our schools and we appreciate what you do. We have a date scheduled to have some additional security cameras uh, that are gonna be installed at our high schools uh, that give us a really good uh, view of incoming and outbound traffic at those locations. Um, we've got a really great camera system in place in all of our schools, interior and exterior, um, but we wanted something a little wider from the school that we could monitor uh, inbound traffic, whether it's pedestrian traffic or vehicular traffic. So we have an installation date at one of our high schools on October the 9th. Mr. Pender shaking his head yes, so I might be right on that. Uh, one big change that we had uh, that we decided on, the superintendent and I spoke about this and we, and we both agreed. Um, historically, when our classes were changing in our schools, we were allowing visitors to access our schools. Um, we have changed that now. There's a new, new law in effect, new policy in effect, that when our students are changing classes in the hallways uh, and may be most vulnerable to an intruder, uh, there is no access now to our schools. So all of our front office staff and our administrative teams know that I don't care how, you see, life is full of inconveniences. You can quote me on that. Uh, and, and we're gonna be inconvenienced to keep people safe. So if it means somebody has to wait outside of a door for an extra three minutes until we can get our kids situated inside their classrooms with their doors shut and locked, then that's what we're gonna do. So to the public that might be watching tonight, uh, we appreciate your, your patience on that, um, but this is about your kids and uh, we appreciate your patience while you wait till we get them situated. Uh, we had some uh, con major construction projects over this summer. Um, I don't want to steal Mr. Pender's thunder, but as it relates specifically to security, uh, there were two single point security access entrances that were built uh, at Queen Anne's County High School and Kennard Elementary School. Uh, those types of entrances are vital to uh, the security of those buildings, and we will continue to move forward with those types of construction projects to attempt to keep our kids and our staff safe. Um, the Alertus uh, mass notification system was installed. It was a huge project over the summer. Uh, Alertus is a, a mass notification system that uh, we had um, invested in for our school district. Um, there are marquee signs, LED scrolling signs, and alert beacons that make noise now installed. There's three of, three of them at each of our schools. Uh, along with those alert beacons, there's some other uh, safety features that were implemented to include uh, panic buttons that were installed at each school. Uh, so we have two panic buttons at each school. Um, and we have also gone and installed panic buttons at each of our portable classrooms. And I'll talk a little bit more about portable classrooms in just a few minutes. We're now conducting uh, monthly radio tests. Uh, each of our schools, if you guys aren't aware, each of our schools all have their own internal radio systems. In other words, they're little walkie talkies. And some of them range from some really nice radios and some of them look like something that you would buy off of a Radio Shack catalog. Um, so we are working very hard to purchase uh, one radio that could that is uh, universal to each school. So if um, Kent Island High School is playing Queen Anne's County High School in sports, uh, and Kent, uh, Kent Island's team comes up with their staff to play Queen Anne's, then they can switch and all operate on the same radio channel. Um, so we're encouraging that. Uh, it also gives us the ability to have schools that have campuses and complexes pretty close together, like the two Sutlersville schools and the two Mattapeak schools they can actually talk directly to one another on those radios. They all have their own radio channels. Uh, but we're also using the, um, the same radio that our DES uh, friends have and, and the police department sheriff's office. Um, the uh, school district has a radio like, like that uh, with the capabilities to transmit much further than what the small in-house radios do. Um, 
on September 5th, the beginning of this month, we actually began to do a radio test. Um, the Board of Education has three radio channels assigned to us. We use one, and that is to talk to our school bus drivers. Um, so at the beginning of this month, we actually began to test our radios, uh, and we went down the line alphabetically from each school and did a radio test. Um, that type of communication is critical if there was ever an incident uh, where we needed to notify uh, multiple schools and, and have, uh, you know, boots on the ground types of conversations. So we're going to continue to... Um, monopolize the use of that type of radio system moving forward. Our TIPS reporting site, um, we're still using the Safe Schools Maryland TIPS reporting database. There's flyers to the left of Dr. Salins. I would encourage uh, any of you that are not familiar with this TIPS reporting database to grab a flyer. Um, earlier this, I guess it was probably two weeks ago, uh, we began to push information back out to our students and our staff and their parents on uh, Safe Schools TIPS reporting. Uh, we sent a, uh, a letter home to parents, uh, and then we followed that with a letter to high school age students. Uh, and it's kind of the, the traditional, if you see something, say something, and we gave some uh, a little additional information on that. So if you hadn't seen that letter, if you're not a parent, um, I'm, I'd be happy to share that with you uh, just to encourage uh, school safety and security tips. And, and it also covers kind of some mental health pieces of it too. If they have a friend that maybe needs some help, uh, it talks a little bit about how to help them out. Just a little bit about training. We continue to um, practice and train on uh, run, hide, fight. Um, we did scenario-based training, hands-on training, and some refresher. We also had some training back in August um, on uh, pre-attack indicators as it relates to a possible assailant. Uh, so our focus is primarily now on, uh, uh, on preventive maintenance and, and potentially stopping any type of violence before it happens. So that's uh, talking about different suspicious activity, different types of um, behaviors uh, and things of that nature. And, and again, our goal is to stop the violence before it starts. We did some crisis simulation training scenarios. Uh, we, last school year through the end of the school year, we did weekly tabletop scenarios. Uh, and then again in August, we did our training with our staff, our, our uh, supervisors and administrators and our bus operators. Again, just quickly to talk about the Alertus program. Uh, that's our, again, our mass notification system. Uh, it is fully operational. We are continuing to test our panic buttons uh, that have just been installed, as well as um, some testing of the system in some other schools. So um, it is a, from what I've seen, it's a very durable platform. It was at Kennard uh, Elementary School this morning. We did some tests and it was really neat um, to activate the Alertus program at that school with the staff sitting in front of me and watch all of them as their phones all started to light up uh, within seconds after the activation uh, and to watch their computer screens be taken over with the message uh, and their emails to start lighting up that they received the message. Um, and and uh, Scott Haas is here and he and I have had a conversation about making sure that our Department of Emergency Services is looped in on that as well. Uh, so if there's an activation uh, that you know, we've got everybody on board and all of our first responders are aware of what's going on. And I have followed up with um, Phil English, so hopefully I'll hear back from him. I'll talk quickly about some grants. Um, this week, the uh, district has applied for two grants through the Maryland Center for School Safety. Uh, one grant was for about $200,000, uh, which we're looking at potentially purchasing some additional Alertus hardware. Uh, and some other items um, that we're going to put into our schools. Um, I'd love to be completely transparent about some of the ideas that we have, but I will not talk about any types of projects that we have that could jeopardize the safety or integrity or security of some of these projects that we have going on. So um, I appreciate you guys if you um, would understand that. Uh, the second grant was for $25,000 uh, that was submitted yesterday as well, uh, and that is to purchase additional radios, uh, as I alluded to earlier about having everybody on the same types of comms at each school. 
talk a little bit about the portable classrooms. Um, we are continuing to enforce um, locked doors at all of our portable classrooms. Uh, we will routinely spot check those portable classrooms to make sure that those doors are secured. We have installed emergency panic buttons uh, at each of the classroom port uh, in e each of the portable classrooms. Uh, we will be doing some testing of those. I think I'm with Queen Anne's County High School on Friday to test there. I think it's Friday or to test those uh, buttons and uh, Ken Island High School next week. Uh, we are looking to purchase additional security cameras that will provide better coverage of our portable classrooms. And that would be a exterior view looking towards the portable classrooms and from the portable classrooms looking out. Uh, our goal is to actually install monitors inside of the portable classrooms so that the teachers and students can live monitor what's going on outside of those portable classrooms. So that if there's an issue that's going on outside of the portable classrooms or approaching those areas, uh, they've got time to react and respond accordingly. The teachers in the portable classrooms have also uh, and this is, was not done before, but they were, have also, each of them have also been provided um, handheld radios that they can talk directly to their administrative teams. So if their cell phone is unreliable, uh, they call the front office and there's no answer at the front office desk, they can take their radio out of their charger and immediately contact an administrator at that school to make them aware of what an issue might be. Um, earlier this week, I released a document to both high schools with some techniques on how to better reinforce um, the portable classroom doors, uh, as well as some, as some techniques that can be used by students and teachers to better fortify the interior of those portable classrooms. And we will continue to have discussions during our monthly uh, and bi-monthly conference calls with the Maryland Center for School Safety. Uh, and some other security groups across the school district uh, that I'm involved with. So I know that was a lot. Um, that was the nutshell version. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have related to that, or if there's any other questions that you'd like to address the board or the panel. Or if whatever the panel has anything that they would yep. want to share. Mm -hmm. I do want to share that I did, I know that the portables usually comes up. That's a question that a citizen usually puts out there. And I was, uh, I went to see Ken Island Portables and it was uh, with Principal Harding and with Mr. Sabori. And I was just really impressed with how many redundancies we have in place. Um, you know, a lot of things we can't talk about, but you know, as I was, I had a few minutes before the meeting started, so I was walking around and I was, um, a teacher did come out and ask me who I was and if they could help me, so that was good. I watched three or four students try to get in and every single door was locked. Um, so, you know, when we talked, you, I was able to hear about the trainings, the, like I said, the redundancies, the things that are in place that we really can't share, but it was really assuring to me and uh, as a parent and as a Board of Education member and, and being so concerned about every single one of our students that a lot of the portable classrooms uh, seem better fortified than some of the buildings. Um, just they've really put a lot of thought and um, preparation into it and so I think it's a great job so glad to have Mr. Sabori on hand and such a great uh, relationship with the police and the sheriff's department and emergency services I was really reassured by going through that uh, and we've done some training too so it was a really good informative reassuring meeting so thank you one other thing that I'll just add and I had in the bottom of my notes here is uh, if you visit a school when that school is about to um, conduct a school safety drill, you're not getting out. You are going to become part of that school safety drill. So those of you that might be watching or listening at home, um, I have instructed our administrative teams at each school that there's no timeout in a crisis. So if a, a contractor's there, uh, there's a visitor there, there's a parent there, somebody delivering flowers for their awesome teacher, you are going to become part of the drill uh, and that those administrators and teachers at that school are going to quickly educate those visitors on what their response should be. Very good. So if nobody has anything else on the panel, we'll open it up. We did have one comment 
um, which was related to the traffic at Ken Island High School. Mm -hmm. And I will say that we have been working as a team, Mr. Sabori, um, the, pr the principal there, Dan Harding, um, Mr. Pender's been involved, as well as the Sheriff's Department to try to resolve some of those issues there, the congestion there. Um, we have been rerouting kids and doing some different things, really trying to put our attention there to see what will really work to make the situation um, the best. So we do have that on our forefront of what we've been working on and uh, we'll continue to work on it as we move through. So do, are there any questions from the audience? Sure. I can be loud. So. Thank you, Carrie. So this question came from a friend of mine, asked me to ask it tonight on her behalf because I did not have an answer myself. Um, if there is an incident at any of the schools, how will parents be notified? Is it dependent on the school or is it like an overall general system? How does that work? So typically, it, it, it would vary on the nature of the incident. Um, usually, if it's an incident that's contained at that school and doesn't affect the entire district, um, then the notification would come from that principal. Uh, if it's an incident that maybe would affect another school that's close by, or maybe it happened on the bus and it's going to affect multiple schools, that would probably come from the district. So really, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Um, each school and the board office here has templates uh, to release information, and most of the time that's vetted by me and the superintendent before it goes out. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I do want to add something to that. Um, sometimes a situation will take place and it involves something maybe that's not at the school base itself and is related to maybe another um, law enforcement and they're in the midst of doing an investigation or something and sometimes it's difficult for us to get information out during that time because we might jeopardize what actually would happen as a result of their investigation. So I know sometimes parents say, well, how come I wasn't notified right away? And it's a lot of times that's under advice from our partners in law enforcement who are saying, please don't say anything right this minute, secure your building and let us do what we need to do in, in the community part of things you know, that type of thing, um, so that we don't jeopardize what they're actually doing. Probably didn't say that as well as, as no, Mr. Sabori would. No, I, but. I, I think that's a, that's a really great point, too, because that is something that we've experienced is, you know, Facebook has become the new ESPN and Fox News and CNN, and a lot of times the information that's going to come as a shock is, is unreliable on those types of platforms. Um, and like the superintendent said, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we, we have to notify parents of maybe an incident that's going on or that we're working with the sheriff's office or the police department uh, or emergency services mm -hmm. to try to figure it out exactly what it is that we're dealing with or that we need to know a disposition. But what I can assure you is we are not doing nothing in those cases, uh, but we have to let these things give them their due diligence. And I can promise you that as soon as we're capable of releasing that information to parents uh, or to the public, we're gonna do it. And sometimes it, the turnaround time is very, very quickly. So um, we had an example last year where we had a school that was in lockdown, but we had like four minutes between the time that they told us for us to get them locked down till the time they called back to say, you can lift up that lockdown because they had resolved their issue that quickly. Um, so sometimes, you know, then you have a school that was kind of locked down and then taken out of lockdown and parents are like, wait a second, I didn't even know. And I don't know that they always understand the timeline that we're working on. And as great as our templates are, we want to make sure that if we're going to communicate that we do that in a very, uh, you know, good way. So we're not going to be haphazard and throw something together to put out to parents. We want to make sure that every bit of information we have is accurate at the time so that we don't send out misinformation like they do online. So we take it very seriously. And as Mr. Sabori said, every second of that we are, we are doing. The school base is working and our, our team up here is working to make sure that when, as soon as we can put out communications, we, we will do that. Other questions? Great question. Mr. Pender. I don't have a question, but I just want to make, make a comment that we were also able Along with the alertus, we were able to install four schools 
with the cell phone boosters that go throughout so the connectivity that was a question that came up last meeting so we were able to um, handle four of those schools and the game plan is the next physical year to do four more on that thank you mr pender okay so we don't have any questions um, that are coming in on our feed i think we've answered all of our questions um, that have been presented. I do want to say that our website is a really good resource. Continue to use that. And also, if you ever have a question, please reach out. Every single person on this panel, if it's emergency services, sheriff's department, even Centerville, anytime you have a question, please don't hesitate to reach out, um, especially at the school-based level. Your contact person is your principal. They're, they they absolutely 100% welcome anybody coming in, making a meeting with them. If they don't, they have questions specifically about their child or, or their, um, you know, the environment there. Um, they're always happy to help, and so we really are transparent as we can be. As Ms. Bennett was sharing, that we can't always share everything, but we're as transparent as we can be, and we're, we certainly welcome anybody coming in and asking questions, emailing us or anything. So, um, happy to help. Okay. If I may add yeah, one thing, sure. Superintendent, on behalf of Sheriff Hoffman, he prom or advised me to pitch uh, that we are hiring for school resource officers. <laughs> so any lateral dip or police officers out there or uh, those who are getting ready to retire, we're hiring full-time school resource officers. Uh, we are fortunate in this jurisdiction in Queen Anne's County to work in a great, great county. Uh, all allied agencies communicate and collaborate daily. So we're very, uh, we're very in tune to each other and we work with each other very, very well. So I appreciate the relationships we have with all, all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you for coming out. Every evening opportunity is, you know, um, time with family. So we appreciate you coming out and, and spending time with us today. So thank you. Thank you, Panama. Thank you. Thank you.